What's up, physics gang? Okay, I just solved this problem. It took me like 14 minutes just to realize that I mixed up my cosine and sine. So we're gonna do it again. Okay, so let's get started. So we're kicking a Canadian football. I don't really know much about Canadian football, but basically we're trying to get it over this field goal and we have two parts of this question. First part's really easy, let's get it out of the way. It wants to know what's the minimum angle that we have to kick it, even like regarding of like how fast we kick it to get it over the angle. Uh, so basically it's saying like if you kick a ball with infinite speed, what's the what's the angle that you have to do to get it over that bar? So it's simply just going to be the the, uh, the hypotenuse basically Because if you kicked a ball like really really fast you go in a straight line So you just have to know what that you know the straight line angle is so all that's going to take Is a little bit of sine and sine tangent. So we know that tangent theta is equal to 10 over 36 right opposite over adjacent then we can take the inverse tangent so of 10 over 36. Just hit the inverse on your calculator. Uh, let's see what this is. I know what it is because I just did it, but 15.5 degrees. Okay, there's part one. Pretty simple, right? 15.5 degrees, right out of the way. All right, so that's what that bet is. That's the easy part. Let's do the hard part. So the next part is telling you that you kick the ball at 44 degrees and it wants to know like what's the minimum initial velocity that you have to kick the ball with in order to get it over the field goal. Okay, so, but it also wants to meters a second, so let's go ahead and convert to meters a second. Yeah, simple enough. Okay, so all we have to do is divide 36 by that number over there, because one meter is 3.281 you know, feet. So 36 divided by 3.281. A different, okay, different number here. 10. Seven meters. Same thing for the 10. 10 divided by 3.281. There's going to be 3.05 meters. Rounding to you know, a couple decimal places, just whatever is reasonable for this. I'm teaching you how to solve the problem, not how to use the right sigfix, because I don't know. I'm just joking. Okay, next part of this problem. The, the biggest problem that you're going to embrace when you find this is that you're going to have two unknowns. You're going to have V naught, which is what you're looking for, but you also are gonna have time. And we don't know what time means, Like, we'll, but what time is, is with that initial velocity, how long is it gonna take to get to that point? So, what we have to do is we have to eliminate one of those. So, I'll show you what ends up happening later. But let's start by drawing a, um, a little diagram of what we have going on, because this is gonna be very handy. So this is 44, and we kick get an initial velocity of V naught, right? So we don't know what V naught is, but we need V naught. But what else we know is um, this is, uh, let's say this is V of X and this is V of Y. This is the velocity, but only in the X direction, right? And this is the velocity only in the Y direction. And we want to know basically like how can we, um, how can we represent these in terms of V naught and sine and cosine? So V of Y, what we know is, so let's say cosine, or let's say sine, sine of 44, is going to be equal to opposite over adjacent. So that's V of Y over V naught. And then what we can do is we can move V naught to the other side. So V naught sine of 44 is equal to V of Y. Right, that makes sense to me. Okay, let's do it for the other one. So cosine of 44 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So V of X over V naught. And we can move V naught over. So V naught is equal to, or no, right. V naught cosine 44 is equal to V of X. And these two equations are gonna help us solve the problem. So what else do we need to do? So we need to know, um, basically, what's our, uh, like what's our movement in the X direction and in the Y direction. So let's go ahead and do that with our kinematics equations. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write that over here. So like X T is equal to one half acceleration times squared plus V naught time plus X naught. Okay, now that we have that, Let's do it. Okay, so let's start with y, up and down. So y is equal to, so because it's in y, it has gravity acting on it. So that's going to be negative uh, 4.905, because that's half of gravity times squared, plus v naught. But it's not v naught. You, know, you think v naught, but v naught's taking an x and y. What we're actually looking for is v of y. Okay, so it's going to be. Um, v of y 
and then plus our initial starting point, which is zero in this case. Okay, so let's do x. x is equal to, x does not have any acceleration on it, right? It's gravity. Gravity is an up and down. x no, does not have any acceleration on it. No gravity to worry about. So, and then, so that means that the other thing is the velocity in terms of respect to x, plus t, and it's also starting at zero, zero. So these are two equations. Now what we can do is we can plug in these two into there to get v naught in both of our equations. So y is equal to negative 4.905t plus v naught, but v of y is equal to v naught sine of 44. So if we say v naught sine 44t, and then we can do the same for x, but with cosine instead. So this is gonna be equal to v naught cosine 44t. Now I'm gonna make sure that I did this right because I messed up last time and it took me a lot of time and I don't wanna do that again. So y is the sine? Yes, okay. I did it right this time, guys. I don't even know what happened last time. And I think I just like totally screwed up. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna eliminate we want to eliminate one of these unknown variables. We have two right now. We have t and we have v naught. And how are we going to get rid of one of those? Well, let's see. Let's let's try to think about getting rid of t because we're looking for v naught, right? So what we have here is a t squared and a t and a t. And this t squared is going to make it really nasty to try to like isolate t by itself. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to isolate t, but we could isolate v naught. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to set v naught of this equation equal to this equation so we can eliminate v naught and just have one variable left. So let's start over here. So what we're looking for is y. Um, we want it to be at its ending point here. So that's 3.05 meters. So 3.05. Now let's uh, add this number to the other side. 4.905t squared. That's equal to v naught sine of 44t. And then we're gonna uh, divide by both of those um, to get v naught by itself. V naught divided by sine 44 of t. So that's gonna be 3.05 plus 4.905 t squared over sine 44 t. It's equal to v naught, perfect. Now if we go over here, we can do the same thing, divide by cosine 44 t, um, and we're gonna get uh, but we also know what x. We want x to be 10.97 meters. So it's going to be 10.97 divided by cosine 44t is equal to v naught. Okay, this is beautiful, guys. Okay, we have two initial v naughts v naught here and v naught here. And what we can do, because they're both v naught, we can set this equation equal to this equation, and then we're going to just have t. And all we have to do then is sign out, uh, find out what t is. So let's do that. Um, Let's use green. I like green. Okay, so let's set them equal to each other. 3.05 plus 4.905t squared over sine 44t is equal to 10.97 over cosine 44t. Okay, so what comes next is just a lot of nasty simplification, but we can do it. And uh, it's just gonna take a bit of time. Okay, so cross multiplying, uh, if you guys remember cross multiplying, you multiply the bottom here by the top here, bottom here, bottom there, and it's uh, equal to each other. So 3.05 cosine 44 of t plus, um, you know what, let's do it a different way. I think, yeah, 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 we can do it this way. Okay, so let's say cosine 44 of t, then all in parentheses, 0.5 plus 4.905t squared is equal to um, 10.97 sine 44 of t. Now what we can do is we can do a little bit of simplification. We have a t on both sides, so we can just delete. Um, okay, let's do that. So then we have, um, and then what we wanna do is because we're trying to find t by itself, Let's, let's go ahead and divide this by, let's go ahead and, um, how do I want to do this? Yeah, okay, so let's, let's just expand it actually. 3.05 cosine 44 plus 4.905 t squared cosine 44 is equal to 10.97 cosine, or no, sine. 
Sign of 44. Okay. Uh, now well, we have to subtract cosine by both sides. Uh, I'm going to go over here. Okay. More work. My arm is getting worked out for sure. 4.905t squared cosine 44 is equal to 10.97 sine of 44 minus 3.05 cosine of 44. And then all we have to do is subtract or divide by 4.905 cosine of 44 to get t squared by itself. Uh, 10.97 sine 44 minus 3.05 cosine 44 divided by 4.905 cosine 44. And then if we take the square root of this, all of it, I'm not writing it again, this just goes in there. Let's see uh, what you get. Uh, uh, yep, that makes sense. That's just going to give you t is equal to 1.24. Okay, so this says that it takes this long for the ball to do that trajectory. But now that we have a, a number that we can use, all we have to do is plug this back in to Oh no, I deleted it. <laughs> Actually, you know what? It's all right. We can just plug this number back into one of these equations to find what V naught is. Okay, so V naught, let's see. So um, it worked for both of these. And if you're on a test or something, a little trick, uh, if you have two of these, if it's the same for both of them, then you probably have the right equation. Okay, so let's try it. So 10.97, I'm doing the one on the right because it's shorter. Uh, cosine 44 times T. Uh, let's see, 1.24, and you get 12.29. Uh, so, yeah, V naught. Uh, actually, I guess you could round that, or 298, or 296, actually, if you use more correct numbers. Okay, that's your initial velocity, guys. Guys, we did it. It took 12 minutes, and we're not even done because we have another part. Uh, I think if you round that up, you get 12.3, which is the sig figs that your thing wants. And this is in meters per second. I don't even want to try to explain everything I just did again, because like it's a big, it's a lot of work. There's probably an easier way to do this. Um, I like maybe maybe you could find something useful out of all this. Okay, now what it wants? Kilometers per hour? Yeah. Okay. Easy enough. Okay, so it goes 12.23 meters per second. And then you're going to multiply this by, um, so there's 1,000 meters per kilometer. So then we're in kilometers, the meters cancel, and then we're trying to get to hours. So we have 3,600 uh, seconds per hour, seconds cancel. Uh, let's type this out. 12.23 divided by 1,000. Okay, he's by the way, that I guess, uh, multiplied by 3600, you get about 44.2. And there you go. That's how you solve it. Uh, let me write it on the board for you guys. 44. There you go. Big, big boy problem right here. Uh, it took a lot of work. I spent 30 minutes on this problem because I did it wrong and then I did it again. Uh, so I, I've dedicated a lot of my life to this exact problem. But now I know how to do it. So yeah, um, I hope you guys found it useful. I hope you guys like my thumbnails. I think they're a little funny, a little bit of a goof. They got a lot of views though. And yeah, um, yeah. so stick around if you have more problems. Uh, feel free to ask any problems in the comments. I'll, I'll try to make a video answering them soon. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, good luck on your Calc homework, guys. Calc homework, physics homework. Calc-based physics homework, or whatever you guys are doing.